It's being called a breakthrough for humanity and something that pushes the boundary of science. I'm talking about the first ever glimpse of a black hole in space. You are looking at a black hole at the center of Messier 87. That's a massive galaxy in the nearby Virgo galaxy cluster, some 55 million light years away from us here on Earth. Up until this point, a black hole was something we only saw in simulations or Christopher Nolan sci-fi movies. It took eight telescopes scattered around the world from Hawaii to Antarctica and beyond to make this possible. To tell us more about this exciting new frontier, we've got Caltech professor and experimental physicist Rana Adhikari, who joins us now on the phone. So Rama, I'm so excited you're here because I've been getting so many questions from my children about this black hole. First, tell us why in particular this discovery, this image is so exciting. I think children have the best questions. So the best, uh, the reason that they're excited is the same reason I'm excited. They look at it and it's just a thing that you would never see on Earth. And the kind of laws of physics that are going on and making that kind of image are the kinds that you only hear about in Harry Potter novels or comic books. So here are some questions then from my six-year-old son. The first was, where did it come from? Where do black holes come from? Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying. These are the best questions. This is exactly <laughs> what we talk about at an astronomy conference. Where do black holes come from? And everyone has their own opinions. And this is one of the observations that we think will help us figure this out. Uh, but the only way to get a big black hole is to put together a bunch of little things. And this thing is billions of times heavier than the Earth, and or billions of times heavier than the sun, which is thousands of times heavier than the Earth. So it's a lot of things that have smashed together. And one of the things we really don't know is, uh, do black holes make galaxies or do galaxies make black holes? Because they all so seem to go together. So what are the opinions? Uh, for, the, for the heaviest ones, one of the opinions is that uh, when these things are flying around in the center of the galaxy, it's really crowded. And their gravitational pull drags on each other and eventually slows things down and they all fall down and land on the black hole. And part of the reason you see all this glowing orange material around the picture of the supermassive black hole is it's the friction of these gases rubbing together as they fly at the speed of light and just rubbing together, just like rubbing your hands makes them hot. If you rub a bunch of gas together at the speed of light, it generates X-rays and gamma rays and all kinds of bright radiation. And that's why we can see it from so far. So here's another question from my son. He said, why was it so hard to take a picture? Why can't they just send a drone in there? Yeah, we, uh, we will send a drone in there someday, I hope, I hope. Uh, this is a picture taken using uh, radio waves, which is really unusual, and it's not something normally we're used to, but it's something like when you see in the movies, people use sonar or radar to figure out what's going on in the ocean or on the ground. So it's a different kind of radiation from light, but it's just as, just as good. And in this case, we use this, uh, or the, the people who observed it use this, uh, because they're able to put radio telescopes on different sides of the Earth. So it's a little bit like how something would look like if your eyeball was the size of the Earth. And why is it so hard? Uh, a black hole is about as small of a thing as you can make, as far as we know from Einsteinian physics. So if you took uh, five billion suns and smashed them together until they completely collapsed, uh, this is about the smallest thing you could make from that much mass. And it's so far away. It's millions and millions of light years away. So, you know, we think it's something small, like when you see an airplane in the sky, that's small. Or when you see the moon, that's small. But this thing is millions and millions of times further away than the moon, or billions of times further away than the moon. And the moon that we, that we look at, it's, it's something like a half a degree across in terms of angle. But it's hundreds of times farther away from the Earth than it, than it takes to get from LA to New York. If you did that trip 100 times, that's about how far away the moon is. But you'd have to do that trip um, hundreds of billions of times to get a far, as far away as this black hole is. It's so tiny seen from where we are. And this is why- So yeah, that was, I, that's basically what I told him for sure. Um, when I first my heard about this- is, <laughs> Oh, sorry, My last ahead. question, Rana, is you know, what is next? What do you learn from this and, and what is the yeah. next big That's, discovery that scientists are working towards when it comes to black holes. Yeah, I was already wondering about this last night when I was trying to, was guessing what the image would look like. 
and I was thinking, how will we do better and what's next? Uh, it's one of these things. It's, uh, Stephen Hawking brought up this problem. This is really why he's famous. In 1974, he said, uh, we really don't know what the border of a black hole is going to look like. And there's a lot of Hawking type of predictions about radiation from the border of the black hole. But what happens when, even when we think about black holes in, on a chalkboard, uh, the laws of physics don't make sense. There's a big clash between quantum physics, which tells us about particles and uncertainty, and Einstein physics, which tells us about gravity and space. We don't, we, don't, we don't know how to put those two things together. And we think, finally, when we do it, we'll find out that there's something really new and exciting going on at the, right at the border of a black hole. So the next efforts will be adding more telescopes to make this image better, um, experiments like LIGO in the U.S., which will look for gravitational waves, um, just starting from a few days ago. Uh, and then hopefully in several years we'll have a, another space antenna to look for um, another kind of gravitational signal, but from supermassive black holes.